Hello everyone, welcome to the first of many guides on rocket racing. Today we're talking about keybinds and how we should customize them, both for keyboard and mouse as well as controller. We'll talk about the problems of default keybinds and their limitations. I'll then tell you how to optimize them to give yourself an advantage and offer some variations so that the binds can fit your playstyle and preferences. We will also talk about some of the in-game settings that are relevant to those keybinds. For those of you who don't know me, I've been as high as number 3 in the worldwide rankings and have broken more than 20 world records so far. I've put quite a lot of thought on keybinds to try and give myself an advantage and I'll be sharing all of that with you today. So let's get started. I'll start with controller binds first. I will be using an Xbox controller, because that's what I have available, but it should be the same for PlayStation. Just do the same using the equivalent PlayStation buttons. Throttle and brake are fine by default. Having them on the triggers is good, so you can use analog input to adjust the intensity of those inputs. Next up is jump and thrusters. By default on controller these two are on the same bind, which is A or X for PlayStation. This is not ideal. There are numerous situations where you only want to use thrusters to lift off the ground just a tiny amount. Such cases are in Airborne 2 for example, where using jump in this spot can get you to hit the hazards. However, you need to be able to press them at the same time, in cases where you want to fly up as fast as possible. Another thing to note is that you should also be able to use thrusters and air dodge at the same time, because that happens a lot in game as well. So my recommendation is moving the thrusters to LB or L1. That should make it easier to press all of these at the same time than if you moved thrusters to one of the four face buttons. Why not RB or R1? We will answer that shortly. Turbo I would say is fine at Y, you could also move it to B if it's easier for you to reach. Uh, in general, you will probably be using only three of the four face buttons for important stuff. So choose the three that are most comfortable for you to press based on your hand size and familiarity from other games maybe. Moving down, you will notice drift and air dodge are again on the same bind, which as you can imagine, again is not a good idea. Drift is probably the most important button in this game, so I would recommend dedicating a finger just for it. So moving it to RB or R1 for PlayStation is probably the best option. Why right and not left, you might ask? Try this. Put your thumb on the left joystick at let's say 50% to the right, not fully. Then try to keep it steady at that position while spamming the LB or L1 button. You will notice that some of the movement caused by your L1 spam is leaking to your analog stick, making you lose some precision. This exact thing can happen in game while you are drifting. So by binding drift to R1, you make sure your left thumb is more steady and easier to control while drifting. Air dodge is fine at one of the four face buttons, I'd suggest having it next to the jump button so that it's easy to perform a jump and air dodge sequence fast. The rest of the binds are not that useful. Maybe the rear view could be considered somewhat useful, so I'd probably put that as the fourth face button. So, for controller binds, my suggestions are put the drift on R1 and thrusters on L1. Then find the three face buttons that are easiest for you to use based on your hand size. For me that would be A, X and Y. Put jump and air dodge next to each other so that you can go from one to the other as soon as possible. So I would put jump at A and dodge at X. Use the third face button for turbo. Lastly use the fourth face button for reverse camera. My controller binds of choice using that thought process look like this. Let's now talk about some of the settings that are available to us and that are relevant to the keybinds. Going here at the Game tab, you will find the Invert Airborne Controls option. I suggest having this off. This might be counterintuitive for many. 
I'm sure many people are used to moving the joystick down to pitch their car up. That makes sense and it's perfectly fine if you want to keep it like that. However, there is a small disadvantage because of how flips work. Imagine if you want to pitch your car up and then flip or dodge up, which is very common in the game. In this case, if you were to have invert airborne controls on, you have to hold your joystick down to pitch up and then quickly flick it to the up position before using the flip. Instead, you can have this off, which makes pitching up and then air dodging up super easy. So I'd recommend keeping this off. On the same tab here, at the very bottom, you will see the invert steer method option. This setting changes how your left and right controls change when you are turning upside down, which occurs quite often as you stick to the ceiling. Keep in mind, this is bugged at the moment and does not do anything. But when that gets fixed, I'd suggest using the never option. It's better to have complete knowledge over what each of your inputs does at each moment than to have the game change it for you at a specific threshold that's hard to learn and get used to. And lastly, toggle throttle. You probably want this turned off if you are on controller. Keyboard and mouse is what I've chosen to personally use. Binds and settings here are slightly more complicated because of the many different key options we have in our disposal. Starting off with throttle and brake. In my experience, using W and S for throttle and brake causes some problems. What problems? Well, we use W and S a lot on the air, both to pitch up or down, as well as to flip up and down. This introduces some conflict as throttle and brake inputs work mid-air. There is this setting that somewhat improves this situation, but it's still not perfect, because there are also issues as you land. For example, in this spot in Pleasant Pit Stop, you want to pitch your car down to not go above the speed pad. But if you hold the S down, chances are you will accidentally use the brakes and slow yourself down. How do we fix this? We change toggle throttle to on and move these two keys elsewhere. I personally use E for throttle, but you can use 2, you can use Q, or you can use shift. You basically want a key that's not hard to use, but we will not be using that very often. Same for the brakes. I personally don't even use the brakes ever, but I do release throttle sometimes for very tight corners. This takes some time to get used to, but I really believe it's worth it. Now the rest of the keybinds are really up to personal preference. Again, I would suggest not using the same bind for more than one action, so separating jump and thrusters is a good idea. And also moving the drift to the right hand is probably ideal so that your left hand is responsible for steering and your right hand is responsible for pressing the drift button. I would suggest dedicating a single finger for drift only and also make sure it's easy for you to press thrusters and air dodge at the same time. I personally use both hands on keyboard but if I were to use a mouse, my binds would probably look something like this. Drift on left mouse click, because it's the most important button, and I want my index finger for that. Thrusters on right click, and then jump and flip on spacebar and one of the mouse side buttons. Also, it's probably a good idea to use shift for something, but for something that you don't use too often, so that it doesn't interfere with your WASD movements. So something like turbo is fine. This bind right here, activate aerial pitch. While you're holding this button and you're on the air, you allow yourself to control the pitch of the car with W and S to pitch it up or down. Ideally, you want to remove this completely and change it in the settings so that you don't have to press a button to activate aerial pitch. If you're wondering what my actual keys look like, since I've chosen to use both hands on keyboard, they look like this. Left hand is the same, throttle on E, brake on control, which again I never use. If I want to brake I just release the throttle and then apply it again, that works just fine. Reverse camera on shift, though you could use shift for something more important for sure. And jump on space. 
And for the right hand, I use OKL OK, and semicolon, which is similar layout to WASD, but on the right side of the keyboard. My drift is on K, so I can use my index finger for drift, which is the most important button. Then thrusters are on O, air dodge on L, and turbo on semicolon. You can of course switch these around to what suits you best, based on what we've said so far. Moving on to the settings, select the game tab. Here again, as we described earlier for controller, you want to have invert airborne controls off. So you can use the same key for pitching and flipping to the same direction. For example, W is both for pitching up and for flipping up. Invert steer method, I recommend never for the same reasons as said before. Although again, this is bugged at the moment and doesn't work for now at all. And as I mentioned earlier, toggle throttle should be on. There are a few more settings for keyboard and mouse that you want to check. Here on the mouse and keyboard tab, make sure require aerial pitch activation is off. This makes it a lot easier to control your car on the air. It basically makes it so that you can use just W and S to pitch your car without needing to press anything else. And lastly, in case you don't want to use toggle throttle and you keep throttle at W, you probably want to turn this on. If you do what I've done, this setting doesn't do anything. At this point, I'd like to repeat that these are just my suggestions. There are a lot of great players who use different controls than these, so feel free to discuss in the comments if you disagree with some of the suggestions that I gave and tell us what has worked for you. If you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe as there are more guides coming your way in the future. And I'll hopefully see you there. Thanks for watching.